this one thing I fail to fathom that people aspire to meditate and is it so difficult to understand that the object of your meditation should be God why is it that teachers are not teaching you to meditate on God and why is it that people are finding all other things to meditate upon the chakras and the breath and the nasagra the bhrumadhya so is God lost from our lives what is the problem why can't we meditate on God I would say the thing that I find most strange as I go around sharing this knowledge as I go around preaching this philosophy of divine love most people ask one question how to control the mind that understanding we need to control the mind is very common and how do we control the mind many people have figured out that meditation is a tool for mind management but what surprises me is that i rarely find anybody who is meditating upon god when i first came to the west somebody handed me a spirituality magazine he said swami ji take a look at spirituality american style so i looked there were a plethora of advertisements somebody is advertising a 3 day workshop on meditation we help you meditate on a lake somebody says once a week sessions on meditation 40 dollars each somebody else says something else it goes on and on and on and nobody is saying that let me teach you how to meditate upon god so this one thing i fail to fathom that people aspire to meditate and is it so difficult to understand that the object of your meditation should be god while the scriptures say sarve veda yat padama mananti all the vedic mantras are pointing in the direction of god the bhagavad gita says sarvasya chaham hridi sannivishto mat tasmritir gyanam apohanam cha vedaischa sarvairaham eva vedyo vedanta krit veda videva chaham arjun i am seated in everybody's hearts and from me comes knowledge remembrance and forgetfulness by all the vedas i am to be known i am the originator of the vedas i am the knower of the vedas and i am the subject to be known through the vedas so the essence of all these instructions is to develop love for god so vai pumsam paro dharmo yato bhaktir dhokshaje so when that is the case why is it that teachers are not teaching you to meditate on god and why is it that people are finding all other things to meditate upon the chakras and the breath and the nasagra the bhrumadhya somebody he said swami ji i'll tell you the way we meditate you say ram 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 and then meditate on the gap between the two ram naps <laughs> i said that nobody can be more expert than you in putting god aside <laughs> you are taking the name of god and still meditating on something else once two brothers were extremely mischievous So the mother thought that they need to meet a swami ji who will drill into their head the need for some devotion. So she took the younger one first to the swami ji. And the swami ji was a little stern natured. So he looked at the boy and he said 
you don't worship god where is god boy was quiet swami ji said i am asking you a simple question where is god the boy was still quiet now swami ji said can't you tell me where is god all of a sudden the boy got up and ran from there he came running to his elder brother and he said we are in real trouble <laughs> brother said what god is lost and they are thinking we have done it <laughs> so is god lost from our lives what is the problem why can't we meditate on god look at the bhagavad gita the only line that is repeated two times man mana bhava mad bhakto mad yaji mam namaskuru arjun attach your mind to me become devoted unto me worship me and offer your respect to me so if we can believe that the best kind of meditation is meditation upon god i think the journey has begun if you know how the subconscious works and you know how to program it using affirmations with the concise choice of positive words clear visualization and a corresponding feeling feeling being the most important component because it's the actual energy that attracts then you can draw bring into your life anything you want Do you have a certain set of affirmations that you do? Do you do them every morning? I do. Yeah, I do them every morning uh, and night. I have one affirmation for my personal life, one for my family life, and one for my business. Just a single one or a list of them? A single one. A single one. Yeah. Okay. Because you want to train, you want to program the mind, right? So if your affirmations like a page long, it's very hard to to shape it. So it needs to be concise and and positive. And then visualize that concise thing in however you want it manifested. Right. So for okay. example, if you you do this show, your affirmation is I will interview fascinating people that can that can give great insights to my listeners. And I just made that up on the spot. Okay, You'll come up with something, right? Right. right? But it's concise. And then you visualize yourself sitting here with your crew, the cameras, talking to different people. Obviously you can't see what they look like cuz you don't know who they are. But just visualize a person sitting here, maybe a faceless person, long hair, bald markings on his head. Right. Robes. And then uh robes, yeah, robes right. beads. Right. right. So that's your visualization and now you're feeling. What does it feel like? And the feeling you can know because you've interviewed so many people. How do you feel after an interview? Do you walk away and go like, "Wow, that was really insightful. I learned a lot. This is wonderful." Take that same feeling and hold that feeling in your mind as you repeat that affirmation with a visualization. Okay. Creates a pattern in your subconscious that starts to vibrate at that frequency. And you might have interviewed hundreds of people and there's some interviews that you go like, "Oh, that wasn't that great." <laughs> But there's some that you go like, "This is probably one of my best." Take the feeling from your best interview and insert that into your affirmation. Because now it's going to be vibrating at that feeling and then you'll start attracting anything of a similar vibration to it. Okay. Now there's the movie The Secret that says all you have to do is think about it and it shows up on your doorstep. Do you subscribe to that or do you subscribe to there's going to be a lot of action on the top of that? Oh, I think there has to be a lot of action. I I haven't watched the movie or or read the book, but I do believe that Maguire had a beautiful saying where he said where awareness goes energy flows. So if you put your awareness on something that's where your energy is flowing and that's what's going to start manifesting in your life, but it needs to be followed through with action. And I think a lot of people just think about things and have cop out lines like the universe will manifest it for me and I'm like that's the biggest cop out ever do the work manifest it yourself don't wait for a handout go out there and create it but put energy into it right so i always tell people the way to look at energy is look at energy the same way you look at water if i took a watering can and i watered a garden bed what would grow the weeds or the flowers they both grow right the water does not discriminate between the weeds and the flowers Energy is the same way too. If you put energy into something, it'll grow whether it's positive or negative. And the way to put energy into something is to put your awareness on it. So where awareness goes, energy flows. You keep your awareness on something, that's where your energy is flowing. And if your energy is flowing, that starts to manifest in your life. Regardless if it's positive or negative, it doesn't matter. 
All you have to do is keep your awareness there. So if you can think about something long enough, over and over again, energy starts to flow there, it starts to manifest in your life. But you also need to do the work. I can't just sit here and just think about it all day. You need to also then support it with, with actions.